Hey, I'm Imran Sadiq and welcome back to another one of our podcasts. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see me. And if you're on the podcast, well, obviously you can hear me as well. Hey, we run Web Squadron Web Design Agency and we're to help you, your clients and your businesses understand websites, get the most out of them and help you to build them as well. And by the way, we use Elementor Pro. Definitely, definitely recommend that as a page builder if you want to get serious with websites. Now, today we're talking about how to get clients. I have done a previous video on this and uh, loads of people love the advice I gave in there. But I want to focus on one particular aspect of it about how do you get clients? OK, we are going to do some other episodes later on where we will cover off in a bit more detail the Fiverr, the Upwork and the whole LinkedIn market as well. But how to get clients? It sounds relatively simple because obviously people out there are getting clients, so it can't be too difficult. But it's also very difficult if you think you can just get out there and get a client. Just because you've earned a qualification in something or you've become a professional in a type of career choice or you've become a web designer by using a page builder or whatever solution you're using, you think you can just tell people and all of a sudden they're going to come knocking on your door. In reality, that isn't how it always is. Of course, if you do something where you specialize in, say, a type of profession, such as maybe you are able to make people live longer, right? Let's just pretend you have got the solution on um, forever life, okay? You could go out there and let people know on social media, you could have a website and you will have a never ending stream of clients. Everyone wants to work with you because you have proven that you can help people to live longer. Never ending life. OK, that's what we call it. Forever life, eternity, whatever you want to call it. But if you're web designing, it's you versus millions of other people out there that are also web designers. Maybe the million is a bit exaggerated, but let's just say a million worldwide. I'm a web designer, so someone else next door to me, down the road, around the corner, in the same city, there's probably going to be thousands, okay? How are you going to stand out and be different and get clients? Because even if you've got a website and you're using social media, I'll do a search for web designers near me. I'm going to get loads of names pop up. And sometimes you, I will be influenced and when I say I, I mean you, the audience, you're probably going to be influenced by how good was their website? What were the prices like? What were the testimonials, if anything? In fact, can I even see who the web designer is? Or are they just hiding behind lots of lovely cartoons and images? Can I actually see their face? Who are they? Am I going to relate to them? When I call them up, um, can I even contact them? What's my conversation like with them? Do I get on? Do we gel? That doesn't necessarily mean you are definitely going to get a client vote, but some of those things can help in terms of getting yourself out there and getting people to find you with your website. But like I said, there's you and thousands of others. And if I'm a client and I do a search and I find 10 people and they're all roughly the same price or whatever, and they're all quite similar, what is going to make me want to work with them more? Well, the answer actually lies in what you can do once they've made contact. And this might sound a bit weird. So you do all this stuff before, this all like the, the, preparatory, the preparatory work, whereby you've got your website, you're doing your social media, you're advertising your services. That's to try and grab attention. You might throw in a lead magnet where you might say, look, if you visit my website, I'll give you a free offer, a freebie, something, I don't know. You might do that as well. But once they've made contact with you, usually via a contact form or email, it's what you do next that is going to make the difference between how you get a client. Now, let me just stop for a moment. There may be those where they did make no contact and you're actually the one making contact with them. So I don't want to go into detail with the Fiverr and Upwork and other markets. There are future episodes. But on a lot of, on a lot of those markets, People will say, I want a website. I need a designer. In fact, there's people on Facebook. They go, hey, uh, I, need, I need help. I'm starting a new business. I need a website built. Who's going to help me out? Who can you recommend? You will see posts like that. Or maybe someone knows someone 
And they go, oh, I think they need a website. Do you think you could help them out? Can I give them your contact details? So what I'm going to talk about next relates to whether a customer contacts you or maybe you've contacted the customer. Okay, so here's what you do next. You've got to try and understand at this next step, what do they want? So if they've contacted you, have you got enough of an idea to assume or work out what do you think they want? And if you're contacting a customer, when they made their initial request in their advert or whatever you or however they you got to hear about them, was there enough given also for you to kind of work out what they want? So let's let me just give you three examples before I get right into the solution. Customer contacts me and says they want a website and they tell me what their business is about. I now have a pretty vague, rough idea for what they want. They're a landscaping business. Well, they're not really going to be a shop then, are they? So I get an idea of what they want. Well, maybe there's someone who makes jewellery. Well, then they're probably after a shop now, e-commerce website. Uh, they're a solicitor, so they're going to want to advertise their services and they might have a big team. So you might need to think about, well, team pages or different types of services in the legal. You know, do they just do criminal law? Or is it conveyancing, family law, things like that? Or they're an architect. Okay, they're going to want to go for a really slick looking website. Architects love slick looking websites that really show off imagery. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. That's, that's, that's the first thing about that. The second thing is that I've seen an advert and the client has said they want a website. Hopefully, again, they've given you some indication in that advert about their business or what they're trying to build. And again, that's going to form a vague idea of what they want. What about if your friend has said to you, I know someone who wants a website. And they say, shall I get them to contact you? Nine times out of 10, you're probably going to say, yeah, get them to contact me. No problems. Here's my number and email. Great. Fantastic. I look forward to hearing from them. Hold up. Don't walk away just yet. Your friend has just told you that someone needs a website. Your next question should be, okay, what, uh, what, can I just double check what they do? Do you know what kind of website they're after? The friend might say, oh, I don't know what type of website they want. Okay, but what do they do? So this friend of a friend who wants a website, what do they do? And they might say, oh, they're a doctor. Right, appointment booking system. Oh, they run a hair salon or a beautician. Right, appointment booking system. Oh, they have um, uh, hotels or lodges they want to rent out. Right, it's going to be that type of booking system. You've got to start thinking about a vague idea. Because all three of them now lead to the solution. When you then now contact the customer or the advert or the friend of a friend of a friend, you're going to go back with a web proposal. You're going to go back with something that is going to detail, not massive, but probably a page worth of information about what you can do for them. You're going to say, this is how we can help you out. Here's examples of websites we've done or examples of websites that you could um, imitate in a way or show off like some of the features that you think would be good for them, you know, in terms of the shop or the booking system or things like that. You're also going to talk about how the features are going to make the client's life more productive or more efficient. You know, you're going to say, look, here you have a booking system. This now means that everything is there in terms of cancellations, deposits, who's coming in and out on what day. So you can manage your time better rather than using a bit of paper or a spreadsheet. You could even split things up between different members of staff who looks after what. You could even give them screenshots of example websites or even just quickly knock one up in Canva, five minute job. Just stick, a, just stick some images and icons together with their logo if you know what their logo is. Now, why would you do all this? Well, imagine someone out there is right now looking for a website. There is a very high chance that if they've put out an advert, they're going to get tons of offers. There is a very high chance that if a friend of a friend has told someone they want a website, they've probably got other friends of a friend telling other people they need a website. And if um, someone has emailed you or contacted you to say, hey, I need to know more, they've probably contacted five or six others. 
Okay, when you get a house extension done, when you're getting some, when you know you've got to invest in something that you want to hopefully see succeed, you're not just going to go with the first person that comes along. The only time you only ever go to one person is when there is only one person or organization to contact. If there's more than one, you will do more than one. That's just human nature. We like to do comparisons and go, right, what am I getting? What's value for money here? So you've now, so you've got all these three people, okay? They're going to get multiple offers and bids and proposals or whatever coming in. But if you have gone the extra mile and you should not spend too long on this, okay? I would say don't spend more than half an hour. Just knock it up. You might have a, a template you use and you just got to fill in the details. This is what we can do. This is who we are. Here's the pricing from. Don't give them the final price because you don't fully know exactly what they want. But if you're able to tell your clients what you can provide, and by the way, this advice I'm giving you is not just for website design. I need to stress that out. You could relate this to nearly any industry or business out there. Someone needs a driveway doing or their garden landscape or a house extension done, right? Imagine house extension, right? They're going to contact loads of builders and the builders will go back. Yeah, we can do it 40 grand. Yeah, we can do that 52 grand. Well, 30 grand, whatever. Where did the 30, 40, 50 grand dollars, whatever pounds come from? Where did, where did they get that from? They don't know the full specifics yet. But if they were able to show examples or they're able to show, or show that we built something that was this big and it looked like this and it cost X and we built something that was bigger and it cost X and we did something that was actually smaller but had tons more stuff in it and it cost X, I'm now going to get an idea for what I'm getting. They may even drop in a testimonial. They may even drop in um, their process. Look, if we were to work with you and we were able to make an agreement in the next week or two, we could probably start working with you in... Um, so at the time of recording this and releasing, it's March 2022. So we could start working with you in May and we will be done by July, whatever. All of a sudden, I'm getting an understanding of who I'm contacting with. There is nothing worse than if you start to work with a web designer or a builder or whoever and you're getting, yeah, yeah, this is great. They are going to do what I want. And then they go, but we can't start until 12 months time. And you go, whoa, hold on. I need it now. I need it as soon as possible. Why the delay? So by, by giving them a lot more info, when you talk, when you contact them, it's going to help you form a relationship and it's going to build trust. Now, that, now, this does not just relate to emails, okay? Sometimes clients call me up and I'm, I know in my head, right, that client is probably going to spend the first two or three minutes telling me about their life, about what's gone wrong with a previous website or a previous design job or something, how they haven't got a lot of money or whatever. This is a common story. This happens a lot, okay? But I know that the minute I get a chance to talk, I've got maybe two or three minutes to get across, right, here's what we can do. Okay, or I can ask another question. So if based on what they've said gives me enough to now go in with, right, okay, here's what we can do for you and here's how we could work for you and here's time scales and rough pricing, right, can we now, and then you want to now move on to, right, how can we help you out a bit more, Um you know exactly what you after but what you want to get across to them is that you understand the problem if you just say well what do you want it's like well they'll just come back and say well what do you think i need you're the expert do your magic and you're like yeah but what magic do you want me to do do you want me to do like a, a painting magic well what do you want me to do but if you can understand what they want from what they tell you or what you've seen, it goes a long mile or a long way to forming a relationship. But this is something you can do on the phone as well, all right, when the client calls you. So you haven't got a chance to send them a web proposal. But if you can make them feel that you are trustworthy and you always ensure you let them know in the phone call, look, don't worry about anything I'm saying if it doesn't make sense or if you're, if, if you, if it's, um, yeah, if it doesn't make sense or you're, or, um, you're a bit confused by it, I'm going to drop this all in an email. Say that two times during your call. 
during the middle and then remind them at the end. Don't worry, as soon as I finish with you here, I'm going to get onto it right now and you'll get you'll have it within an hour. Give them that reassurance that you're on their side and you're going to help explain things. Because I want you to put yourselves in the shoes of a client. And I'm sure you've all been there. You've made a request for something, okay, and you are now inundated with requests. You're getting emails. If you made the mistake of putting your phone number down, you're getting phones, text messages, all sorts. And nine times out of 10, they will say, yeah, we can do that for you. Let us know the best time to contact you. We can do that for you. Let us know the best time to contact you. What do you mean you can do it for me? You, you, you really know what you want for me? And, and that's the best you can do? Or they give you a link to their website. So I now have to click to go to your website. Well, surely you could have gone into a bit more detail. Surely you could have given me a little bit more in the text or the email you sent back or something like that. And I, in the very, very early days, used to call clients back up. And then I realized very soon that, you know, like, um, uh, let's say the request was made. And within five minutes of that request being made, I might contact the client. And already within five minutes, that client is fed up. And they're like, oh, God, you're the third one that's called me now. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I um, Look, I've explained this all before. I don't want to go over it all again. Just email me a quote. Okay, just email me your best price. So they don't care now. They don't want to speak to anyone because they are just fed up of repeating themselves. So now what you do is you try and assess. And if based on the advert or the friend on a friend doesn't know any more about what the client wants. I mean, come on. If a friend says to you, yeah, I know someone who wants a website, but they can't even tell you the business that the friend of a friend is in. Then I would be like, right, that just sounds like they obviously don't talk a lot. And what if you contact the friend of a friend and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I just mentioned it. I didn't mean it. I was just trying to get them away from me, right? Unless it feels like a solid request or a solid advert or where you get a good idea or a vague idea of what the business is about or what they want, I would just say, don't bother. Just don't bother. Because I can definitely tell you now that in the early days, Maybe out of every 20 proposals we did, there might only be one or two that bit. And it's very degrading, demoralizing. You sort of go, what, really? What are we doing wrong here? But when you start to now go, no, you're only going to go for those where you have a good idea of what they want or a vague idea. And you can formulate that into your proposal back to them. Believe me, our hit rate now I would say it's close to 90% with what we put out there. You could say, well, we do less now, but that's not the point. The point is we rechanged our approach and our strategy around it. So next time someone says, hey, I want my garden redone, or I want a house extension, or I want a painting being done, or a sculpture, or whatever, or I need my back straightening because I got back pain, whatever. If you understand what they do, make your proposal resonate that. And look, the back pain one is a great one, okay? If I contact someone and say, hey, I've got really bad back pain, I don't want them to say, oh, that's great. I'm a chiropractor, 20 years experience. I'm qualified here, 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 and here. And uh, I have my own place. I've got a lovely bed and all that. got all this equipment. Yeah, book in. Get down in. We'll sort you out. They hardly touched the back pain bit. They talked about the equipment and where they're qualified. And they maybe have been in a newspaper or something. Because this happened to me once. But they did not really talk about the type of service they offer. Because I know I like a particular type of back pain therapy. I don't like the butterfly, ooh, lovely, like, you know, gentle approach. No, I want the hard, you know, elbow twisted. I want to hear my the, the water in my back go pop. I want to feel the, I want to feel my muscles all getting back to normal. Anyone out there with back pain, you know what I'm talking about. And when a chiropractor says, okay, here's the techniques we use, and this is what we'll do, and most likely we'll give you some exercises as well to hopefully, hopefully prevent you having this problem again in future so you can do self-maintenance, I am more inclined to go to them because I don't care where they're qualified. I don't care what degree they got. I don't care about your PhD. I really don't. 
I want to know how you can help me solve my problem. So how to get clients that you love my really long answers. I go, this is what we're going to talk about today. And when I give a really ridiculously long answer, how to get clients is about solving the problem. And if you have no idea what the problem is, quite frankly, you might as well just throw your name in the hat because that's how it will be. Everyone is going to go in for that client because I bet they've cast their net wide and it's just going to be you versus 10, 50, 100 other people. But if you have a vague idea or you've got enough to go on and you can make your proposal to them, what your services that you're going to offer, the timeline, examples, you have a higher chance. Nothing is bulletproof right? Nothing is guaranteed, okay? Don't listen to me and go, well, I did all of this and I didn't get a single client. It might be down to your approach, but nothing is bulletproof. But if you can help yourself a little bit more, I think it's worth it. Hey, I hope you enjoy listening to this podcast, Imran Sadiq Web Squadron. It was all about how to get clients. And if you're watching on YouTube, hey, like, subscribe, share and follow. And of course, I'll keep seeing you and you'll keep hearing me. Take care.